Good day, traders. This is Richard. This is the second video of the day. The first one was really short. And this is going to be short too. I want to call our attention to our trade alerts today. And while I took an awful lot of trades this morning before we got any alerts, and they were mostly shorts off of exuberant, um, irrational exuberance in several markets, crude oil, the euro, gold, the NASDAQ, natural gas, silver, I traded coffee. All right. And And then we got two alerts. One, both of them were shorts. And let's revisit them here and see what they're doing right now. Blow this up so you can see it. So we got a crude oil cell and a natural gas cell at time of this come in. All right, I have to X out of it and look at the time. Okay, the first. First one we got was at 512, and the second one we got at 520 a.m. Pacific, and it's now 6 a.m. They both uh, work pretty good. There are actually four of them. Let's take a look here. Um, we got the CL and, an N, and the natural gas, and then we got a uh, 6E and a gold. So these were all shorts. And you can see the crude oil is down. It worked. The, the euro worked. The gold worked. And let's see. Didn't we get a natural gas over here? Yeah. And the natural gas, uh, where is that? Right here, it worked too. Not, none of them worked magnificently, but they all made us money. And it depended on the amount of patience you had and the amount of risk you were willing to take. Let's talk about that. Now, it was it happened about 45 minutes or an hour ago. What did we say about those times? Let's go back, back. Got to get out of that and see the time again. I wish the time was in this, but we, I don't think we can do that. So the time is right here, 512 and 520. And it is now 610. So about 45 minutes since entry. And they all worked. However, we we got stopped out of the Euro the first time. And then it really worked. But this um, this was our first signal to sell. And this stopped us out. Let's see what time that was. I don't know if that was back when I was trading alone or whether it was when we started getting alerts. That was at 4.30. Yeah, I was here at 4.30, right at 4.30. And uh, then we got our first alert at 5.12, about 40 minutes later. So all those alerts were excellent. But I want to comment on trade management alerts are, are great and they give us an idea to use our noggin, but we can't just go blindly into an alert. We must do our own audit, our own verification, our own judgment do we like the judgment of the alert system do we like the judgment of the the source of the information we're getting can we trust it and that's what every good accountant does both both uh there's two uh, two accountants in the room and that's what accountants do they verify before they act 
as accountants and auditors, we verify before we act. So you can, you can look at the opportunity that an alert, an audible alert, a typed in alert, an announced alert, a, a documented alert. A documented alert is going to come a little later than the uh, audible alert. And you only get the audible alert if you're in our trading room. And, and so uh, that you're going to get approximately four minutes earlier than it gets printed and published. Because just think about it. The, the spotter announces it and then goes to work reporting it. And that work requires typing in this information, all that information, that takes a minute. And here's another one. And so the spotter was thinking about four different alerts all at the same time. So these had to be typed in and these other two had to be typed in. There's about four minutes, right? Typing, just typing it and then sending it. And it has to go over the wire before you get it. So Skype is quick, a lot quicker than email, but it's not as quick as you need it to be. So if you're really serious about following our alerts, you probably need to be in our room when they're announced and you hear them early so you can act immediately because a delay in action can cost you money and turn your gain, your potential gain into a loss. And sometimes we lose anyway because of this. I want to call your attention to this again a second time. You see that topping tail there said, sell me, sell me, sell me. But see what happened here? That went up and see where it, it, it opened here. It closed there, but price went clear up to there. And that's what caused the alert. Because when it started backing off, that fractal high started backing off. That was the signal to sell. And that's when... It was, it's, it was, it's my right hand trade. That's the name we gave this condition, which is officially a fractal high. Uh, and it, and a fractal high announces to the world that this instrument is overbought, overheated, and needs to, to rotate some. We don't know how much at this juncture of seeing the fractal eye, but it is a signal to test a short. Now, remember when I said test, okay. whenever you take a trade, it's a tentative thing. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a first kiss, you know, you're, you don't know whether the other person wants to get kissed and who's initiating the kiss. And uh, you're a little timid is you're not acquainted with this other person as well as you might be uh, a spouse that you've been with for five days, five months, or five years, or, you know, 50. My point is that you don't know. You know there's some electricity there. You know there's some imagination there. There's ex some excitement there. But you don't know whether you're going to get accepted or rejected on that first kiss but you want to do it. Now that's the same thing as trading. You see that fractal high and you want to sell it. Now let's talk for a minute, just diverge for a minute with me. We're not going away from this topic, but we are gonna diverge for a moment and look at the opposite. This is a fractal low. That is the same energy, the same excitement, the same mystery and the same exposure to risk as a sell signal. If this is my left-hand trade. It's hanging down here by the side of your knee. Your left hand hangs down by the side of your knee. Your right hand is held up like you're saying the pledge of allegiance to your country. And the top of that hand is your middle finger. And that is the fractal high. And that is my right-hand trade. Now, these were all right-hand trades that we got today. All four of these. There's two 
the euro and gold cells, and two more, crude oil and natural gas. All four of those were right-hand trades, fractal highs, topping tails that had a wick on top. Now notice what happened here. After that candle ended, and it was probably at the, at least the 10 minute mark when it was announced, I have no idea, but let's look at the, the time it was dispatched. Let's go back, exit out and go back. See what it was dispatched at 512. The, the first one was dispatched at 512 and the second was dispatched at 520. But the thought and the audible alert came in probably at 459 or 4, uh, 455 or maybe 505 more like it. Okay. Our spotter doesn't go to work before a but our spotter um, is working before 5 a.m. Sometimes searching uh, through the charts before these announcements come because it takes some work to find the sweet spots. Now I'm gonna go back this the fourth time. I've, I've said, look at these other candles here. I've called, I haven't said it exactly like that, but I kept saying, look at this. And then I kind of drug my point over here. But that thing right there, that's a stop out. Not, a, not, if you're, not if your stop was initially one tick above this high here where it should have been. But we're also, not only are we greedy, but we're timid and we don't want to lose hey, Richard. any money. Yes. Um, we're looking at your Skype screen with your charts. I don't think you're showing us what you're. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Are you showing us something different? I don't see your cursor. You, you see it now? Uh, no, I see the Skype screen with the um, 20. I don't know. You got 20 little charts with a bunch of domes. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm showing. Okay, which chart were you showing us? Yeah. All right, so can you see my pointer now? This is what I've been talking about. Is this gotcha. chart? Okay, okay, so what I'm trying to do is is show our, uh, you know, teach people how uh, to use our alert service and uh, teach them how to read the mind of the market so that they could do this themselves. And we all can do this ourselves. We don't need this alert service if we know what's going on in these markets. But when you're first new, you need a little, a little guidance, a little hand holding, a little um, spoon feeding so that you can get used to your environment. You know, when you're getting spoon fed, you're in a high chair typically and you're sitting there looking at the ceiling and looking at the wall and looking at this face that's getting ready to jab something in your mouth and you don't know what's going on. You're just a little kid, a really young little kid. Don't know much yet, but you are hungry, you know that. And so this guy's pushing food in your mouth and you'll take it eventually, but you don't know quite how to eat yet. So you have to have help. And that's what we're kind of here for is to help you through that a level of learning to get the gist of how to eat and how to take trades. So when you take a spoonful right here, sometimes you spit it out because you got too much in there for you to mush around with your tongue. And so you don't know what to do with all that extra stuff that you don't know how to handle that much food. So you push it out. And next time, whoever's feeding you knows, well, you better, better give a little bit less uh, uh, on the spoon there so I don't choke this kid. But the thing is, is even though you're given the right spoonfuls, a few minutes pass, and these are 15 minute candles. And this candle over here took all your gains away. You had some gains away, go down to there. You got in right, right up there, you had some money. But 10 minutes later, you lost it. And now you're red again. And you're, you're liable to get stopped because you may have adjusted your stop, tightened your stop, but 
when it went down to there. And now you get stopped out. So you, what do you do? You get back in? Yes. Yes, you get back in. Why? Because, because this thing was overheated. It was overbought. And when it gets overbought, and you see it with this indicator right here, when that thing is up there at the top like that, it's overbought. And that means that the pressure to, for price to come down is in those candles. They're suffering up there. There's not enough oxygen up there for that for them. There's not enough uh, uh, environmental uh, comfort there for them. So they want to move out of that area. It's not good. It might be, might be that you're underwater. You know how you feel if you're underwater and you need to take a breath. You've got to get above water to do that breath. So it's all about using your other emotions, your other little bits of knowledge to know that you don't like where you're at. So you've got a bunch of decisions to make. Do I try to surface? Do I just hold my breath? What do I do here? I'm, I'm, I'm new at this. I've been underwater for more than 20 seconds before in my life. How, how long can I hold my breath? I haven't been tested. I'm not a Navy SEAL. I don't know if I can hold my breath for three minutes. My point is that this is a tenuous environment right here, getting entered properly. But when we have a topping tail, that, that's the connection. That is the, the excitement of two people facing off that are attracted to one another, and but strange to the point of they don't know what the other one wants for sure. And so uh, they don't want to be embarrassed. They don't want to be rejected. So they don't want to go ahead. And so that little magnet thing there between the faces, that polarity that will suck you in and create a kiss is what you're looking for. That magic that magnetism, that polarity, the draw into the web. And is this web a safe web? Is it going to go my way? Am I going to make some money or am I going to lose some money? Well, if I'm going to lose money, I'm okay with losing 50 bucks, but I want to lose 500. I don't want to even lose 70 or 90. I will, I'll lose 50. I'll lose 60, 70. Maybe if I need to, to seal the deal here, but I don't want to lose any more than that. And that's where your stop is right above, one tick above this, this fractal high here. When you, your strategy, you set it up and you got a 10 tick stop and a 30 tick target. I want to make $300, but I'm risking a hundred. Now you don't want to keep that hundred risk there for long if you can control it and you can go up here and control it after you get in and click your click your stop and drag it down and tighten it so then you only lose 50 if you if you have to get out quick it's kind of like an emergency door it's kind of like that that uh, big old bar that goes across the door you can get out even though you just push your waist against it or your back against it or your butt against it but if the fire's going and you've got to get out of that building, you want to be able to get out of that building. So you want that door to be manageable by a short person that's only four feet tall, five feet tall. They can reach it with their hands. A, the tall person will reach it, reach it with their butt. I mean, that bar across there that will open that door is essential. And you need that right here. So you have to be prepared to escape if it's not what you thought it was. And that's how we trade. It's like fishing. You get, you get a, a, you're fishing for a 20 pound fish and all of a sudden there's a 300 pound fish on your line, left the hook and the ladder and the, and the whole rod and reel go 
because if you don't, you're going to be pulled into the water because you only weigh 150 or 170 pounds. Or, and if the, if the fish out there is 300 pounds, it can pull you in. So you can't hold on to that. You can, you can manage a 30 pound. So all these things have to be weighed. In the moment, I'm talking about in seconds, in microseconds. And then after you've done it a hundred times, you will not know it after 10 times. You still don't have the um, feelings. You still don't know how to take that bite and chew that or mush that and swallow that. You still are not, you just got weaned from a nipple. You don't know anything. You're just brand new. So you need to try it a hundred times. 200 times on the simulator where there's not really any risk except to your ego. Ego meaning if you're wrong about something, you feel, oh, I'm stupid. You know, that's okay. Feel stupid. All you want, you're on the simulator. Not, you're not risking money. You're not risking your life. You're not risking any money. You're not risking anything besides your ego. And risk that ego all you can and trade as many times as you can on the simulator to get the feel of it and know what I'm talking about here and know how to manage this yourself before you risk a nickel. That will make you a champion trader someday and it will keep you from being broke. It will keep you from losing too much money or investing too much money in an activity that you don't know yet. So protect your money with your ego and let your ego take the hit. I don't care how many times you're wrong. Your ego damage is not near as serious as your bank account damage. So let your ego get knocked around while you're learning the game. And if you get stopped out here, don't fret. Just see if it doesn't make a new high over here, it's going to go down. After all, the, the volume analyzer, not the volume counter, but the volume analyzer has told you, it's provided you analysis that it is overbought. And when it gets overbought, it has to get down. It has to move down. It's just, it's a nature. It's like systolic and diastolic heartbeat. It has to go the other way. If it doesn't, it mucks up. So believe in some of these things. You can stake your, your money on this indicator here to some extent. And now see how it's leaning, bending over and the price is keeping going down. I mean, this is this. If you're still in this trade, you're in good shape. I'm not. I got. I got out. But uh, I had so many trades on today. I had ten trades on. I, I had. I had between seven and ten trades on simultaneously. And I've told you a dozen times before that it's dangerous to your ego, your bank account, and your 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 heart. It'll give you a heart attack. Having that much activity going simultaneously, that's dangerous. So I weaned myself from some of my trades, took a little bit of money and stayed around and made some money on others. Richard, um, <clears throat> what would your expected target be on the um, crude? Well, restate your question. What would your expected target be on the crude trade? 38% from the high. So how do you figure that out? Let's take a look. Okay, it all started here. So let's draw a fib from, uh, I don't know if these fibs are set good or not yet. Let's go up here. Uh, That's not it. 
the 38 percent from this point to this point just eyeball it 40 percent yes two-fifths okay from here up to there figure out two-fifths it's right in here somewhere so i would say around here uh snap tools on let me turn that snap tool off so i can measure that thing and put it down here about 40 percent that's somewhere around 38 so now let's do the measurement tool i never know whether to go to bottom to top or top to bottom i think that's it right there did it right that time Okay, here's 38%. There's the high at, at zero. And then we got 21% and 38%. That's what I thought I could get. Now we've gotten almost, we got 61% because it was so overbought that it pulled back that much. Now this is about all we're going to get. If we get down to 78%, that'll be, uh, that'll be good. But this is, I would have my stop right there. And if it goes up there, I'd take my money because I got in somewhere around here. And so um, my profit is in this box. I mean, definitely there. But this is what I've managed to get in addition to that here. So I would now have my stop somewhere in here. So if it goes up any, I'm going to get out and get 60, 60 percent. And that'd be a nice trick. Okay. How much is that? Uh, On the micro, it's about 80 bucks. Or, 80, or 800 bucks. Eight bucks or 80 bucks? 80, yeah, 80. 80 bucks, yeah. And... 800 bucks if it was full size. Magnificent trade with one contract. Now let's talk about one contract, three contracts, nine contracts, six contracts, 12 contracts. We're not doing that. We're never going to do that in this room. This was training room. And everybody in this room is still learning how to do this business. And we're fools to risk uh, a, a six lot or a nine lot or a 12 lot at this juncture in our trading, because this stuff can move on at, uh, move on. It's very whimsical. Natural gas is itself if you want to um, look at a trade. So now, what did I say? I said, I'm stopped out now. If I had my had my stop where I said I wanted it right now, I guess just got stopped. I got my profit and now it's going against me if I was still in it. It's going back, give it's going going against anybody who's still in it. And so I was ready. I was I was when I was talking, I was thinking this is about it. And it's right down here to 61. So you always go for the 38. But expect, you always expect the 38, but you always plan for the opportunity to get the 61. But don't be planning for 78 or 100. Don't be planning for that. That doesn't happen. It happens, but not often enough to make it, to, 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 to plan for it. Plan for the 38 for damn sure and expect the possibility of a 61. But then, be ready to escape. And what did Larry say this morning in that short video we watched? If you, if he, he just looked at you and said, you dumb shits, if you're not here, this is, this is a lot of money. Don't risk it. In other words, tighten your stop. All right, that concludes. Uh, well, I want to go back to and 
and I want to make this a little bigger. So not, I don't want to max it out. I just want to make it a little bigger. I want to see the top. Now, remember, the entry point was right where I have that blue line at the top. It's not up here. You, know, you, you don't you don't start selling before you have a wick. You don't start entering short before you have a wick up there. And you got to you got to you got to it's all relative it's all relative. How long is this run? Question 1. How long is this candle? Question 2. And when it was up there and it was a hard white candle maxed out up there at the top, you think it could, you, you, you know, it could go higher. But when it starts stalling, it's running into a headwind and it's pulling back. And that headwind may be 30, 30 miles an hour. It might be hurricane force, 300 miles an hour. I think that's a little bit faster, but my, my, my metaphor works. It could be a strong wind or it could be a hurricane force to push it down. And at the beginning, it's just a, a light wind that's pushing it back. It's like a tree branch. But you need more force. Maybe not hurricane, but certainly significant pressure to push it down. So it has to be spent. It's, it's kind of like sex. You know what happens. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for an orgasm this short. The pressure's all gone. And you're entering the rest period. That's where you get your money. Okay, now that I've completely embarrassed everybody else. Yeah, I'm sitting here laughing. I'm just like, oh my gosh, what a metaphor. Well. Uh, did you take a look at natural gas or not interested? Well, I just, was, let me finish. Let me, let me okay. stop my video here so we can use.